Baked, Act One, Scene One. Jane Huang and her parents, Ming Li and Yun Zhou, are in the kitchen of the family bakery, Ming Li's Mooncakes and More. Jane is fiddling with a tray of dough balls. Yun Zhou preps three bowls of naked sesame balls. Jane sets down the tray on the stove range and recoils. Ow, frick! Jane! Jane. I told you to be careful. Yeah, but you say that so much, it's totally lost its meaning. Like, until I was 12, you told me to be careful every time I walked up the stairs. Hey! You know, 12,000 people die every year because of stairway accidents. Or when I carpooled to the debate in invitational with Akil Goyal, and right as we were leaving the house, you were like, be careful, Jane. At his age, I was the scariest looking boy in my whole town. Yunjo, back me up. Yunjo hands a bowl to Ming Li. You really do say it all the time. Yunjo hands a bowl to Jane. Okay, shake. The family shakes the naked sesame balls in unison in a choreographed wiggle. Brought out the old Harvard shirt, I see. Yeah, it's college shirt day. Everyone is supposed to wear apparel from the school they're attending, or in my case, hopefully attending. Hopefully? Everyone knows you're going to get it. And my only regret is you'll have to be halfway across the country. This again? Dad, that's the plan. I go to Harvard, get a 4.0, become president, and then I can finally designate Mingley's Mooncakes and more as America's Bakery. And then you can lower our taxes, but just ours, like a family discount. I'll put it on my to-do list, which incidentally starts with not being late for school. Hey, take a deep breath, slow down, don't worry. They toss the balls into the air and finish shaking. Jane takes a breath and grabs her backpack. Okay, losers, who's driving? Four months and a week and then she's leaving home. Four months and a week and then we're all alone. The, the beginning, beginning of her story, so what lessons will she learn? On its way today. Have a good day at school. Don't tell me what to do. Yeah. Who do you think you are? Her dad? Yeah. Casey, you're adopted. Bye, Jane. Man, he's getting good at dealing with me. You're getting sloppy. I know. Hey, it's a big day for you. Nope. No, it's not. It's just like any other day. Are you doing that thing where you act like something doesn't bother you and really it's all you can think about? Nope. So you're not freaking out at all about this scholarship? Nope. Even though your parents don't have the money to send you to Harvard unless you get it, and your dad hates student loans because it contradicts his ethic of self-reliance? Yep. So come on, let me see it. Minnesota Valley State Satellite Campus School of Aquaculture. It's official. Yeah, and VSSCSA isn't anyone's first choice, but you know, poor as shit. This is exciting. Uh, no, Harvard is exciting. And VSSCSA is cornfields, water towers, and the epicenter of the American opioid crisis. Shut up, I'm happy for you. What am I gonna do without you? Going separate ways for the first time in our lives. I get to rediscover who I am and what I'll try. Running through the rain makes me kind of scared to see I'm off. But when will I be ready to be me? Jane, you want to hit later? You know it. Jane, do you get my physical done? Make sure that platelet count stays up. Sensei! We are the wind between the trees, Hatoshi. Jane, can you help me with my math homework? Whoa, that's kind of racist. We're off! Life is out there waiting just for- Life is out there waiting just for us. That's what they say. But does it really feel true to any of us here in the real world? High school? Take Dale here. Dale's parents took away his video games because he only got into MBSSCSA. They think he's worthless just because he wasn't interested in wasting away applying to colleges. Well, Dale, I'm telling you that you're not worthless. Because here's all College Shirt Day really amounts to. It's the system taking another stab at us alternative kids because we don't fit their mold of success. And I'm not going to have it. 
I'm not gonna dress up just to show off some weird identity I've created around my future college. What's with your shirt? Oh, this? I picked it out last night because it's a blank slate, like my future, since I'm not going to college. You see, someday I'll be the one who rules the world. And while you're out there getting dumber, I'll get there first. Don't need a piece of paper to convince me of my worth. I'm off. It's the only way for me to go. Day after day, beyond the past and to the future, change begets change, and we're all changing too. Look beyond the seashore to the new shoreline ahead, and we're all... But not yet. First, let's go over the graduation details. Commencement. The end of one thing and the start of something new. In just three days, every one of you kids will be walking across the cafetorium stage and emerging as young adults. Young adults with real dreams and desires and urges. Um, and I urge you all to stop and enjoy this period of your life. It won't last forever, and when it's over, you'll miss it. The bell rings and the class files out. Jane enters Mrs. F's office to ask about the scholarship. So, so you had a really strong application. <laughs> and letter of rec from a good counselor? <laughs> oh, Jane. <laughs> well? Jane. Any college would be lucky to have you. You're definitely the best student this town has produced in decades. Not that I would know personally, being in my late 20s, so sometimes even the best students do things- Mrs. Feldman, did I get the scholarship? Harvard is- Mrs. Feldman? A Mrs. Feldman hands the rejection letter to Jane. Thank you for your interest. We are very sorry to inform you that- Don't be discouraged. This was the toughest year to get into Harvard, let alone this scholarship. There are plenty of options for financial aid. So please reach out to me if you need anything. We're rooting for you. Jane stares at the rejection letter in silence. a mistake that cuts me so deeply that I don't heal. I've never let a swing and a miss prevent me from step, step, stepping up to bat. I'm encompassed by the dark and everything seems to stop but me. Will it suspend me here in motion? Is this who I truly am? You know what they say when you're Take a deep breath and slow down And flip on the switch in my brain Cut the crap, get back Don't put salt in the wound What the fuck, get up Be the best in the room Pick up the pieces And use the failure as fuel I have a responsibility To go to a school that'll make mom proud if I let them down I can't even picture the whispers of all I'll never be You know what they say when you're losing the game Don't stay on the bench and complain So I'll take a deep breath and slow down And flip on the switch in my brain Cut the crap, get back, don't put salt in the wound What the fuck, get up, be the best in the This won't take you down, it's not the end of the road You can break this down and you can go for the gold Pick up the pieces and use the failure as fuel Though it feels like I'm blind I know that they'll be aligned A light that I'll shine, a path I'll find I know that I will find my way 
get back. Don't put salt in the wound. What the fuck? Get up. Be the best in the room. Pick up the pieces and use the failure as fuel. This won't take you down. We it's not the all. end of the road. You can break this down. We you can all. go through the hold. Pick up the pieces and use the failure as fuel. out there waiting just for us scene two the living room yoon jo and ming lee work through some receipts and financials Feels are down again this month well we better hoist them back up it's not funny ming lee we don't have money to send home to mom this month and at this rate we'll be out of business by the end of the year there's got to be something we can do can you believe that mom is still working at 80? I wish we could send her more. She could finally retire. Jen Jung is gonna need a new best motorcycle mechanic. Mm. Don't you think she's started to forgive you? It's been 12 years. I mean, you're still sending money when you can. It's not enough. We need to do something big. Put us back on the map. I know that look. The Mid-Autumn Festival. Happens in September. Exactly. We spend the summer planning a big Mid-Autumn Festival event. Decorations, sales on pastries, the works. Okay, yeah. Jane, we have a surprise for you. Oh? Ming Lee pulls out a brand new Harvard sweatshirt from a shopping bag. We got you. This new shirt! <laughs> oh, great! But wait, there's more. He produces two more crimson t-shirts from the same bag and holds one up. It reads, Harvard Mom. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know what? Maybe you should wear this one. And I can wear the one that says, Harvard Dad. You know, that does make more sense. <laughs> you guys are so dumb. Your turn. Is everything okay? You didn't get it. Oh, Jane. Oh, Jane, I'm... I, no, Mom, I got it. I got the scholarship. Oh, my God. For a second there, I thought... Ming Lee jumps up and brings Jane in for a hug. Yes! Oh. A full ride! <laughs> $200,000, baby! Wow, I can't believe it's really happening! Hey, what if we moved up our mid-autumn festival event to August? But it's in September! Yeah, but this way, Jane can be here with us, too. Besides, they won't know the difference. Let's do it, Jane. Yeah, of course. I'm here. Okay. Now I have to make a phone call. Do you think? Every Chinese mother in the city is going to know in about 12 minutes. Great. Well, what are we doing tonight? I think I want to be alone. I need to internalize what just happened. Deep. Okay, we'll uh, rain check. <laughs> Scene three, Casey and Jane in Jane's room. $200,000? Yeah. You told them that you won a two fucking hundred thousand dollar scholarship. What the fuck is wrong with you? I'm going to make up the money this summer. Oh yeah, huh? It's not impossible. Jeremy Chu made $100,000 in two weeks building mobile apps and he's 11. Jeremy Chu is a sociopath. He's your cousin. Yeah, and my mom never lets me forget it. Oh, Casey, why can't you be more like your smart, financially independent, sociopathic prick of a cousin Jeremy? Fucking Jeremy. That sounds like some deeply rooted shit, Case. But you have, like, the chillest Asian parents I've ever met. Why don't you just tell them the truth? I'm sure they'd be fine with it. You weren't there. You should have seen the looks on their faces when they thought I didn't get it. That sounds like some deeply rooted shit, Jane. Shut up. So, 
Yes, of course I'll help you. You don't even have to ask. I didn't. So I've already got most of it figured out. Unsurprising. We're going to do bake sales. You're going to compete with your family's business? No. Bake sales don't compete with bakeries. The markets are totally different. Anyway, that's going to be your job to figure out as head of marketing. <laughs> yes, sir. And of course, we'll split the profits 50-50. What? I, I don't want the money. A little extra cash never hurt anyone. Case, take the money. It'll help you make friends in college, I promise. Yeah. We well, yeah, unmuted it still. <laughs> It'll be good for me to branch out. You're right. Okay. Yeah, of course I'm right. You know, you're really going to miss me. I mean, where else are you going to find a perfectionist this hell bent on controlling your life? Nowhere but here. Guess you'll just have to wait it out at school till you see me next summer. <laughs> Who says it'll end there? And as far as we know, this is our last summer together for the rest of our lives. Oh, God! <laughs> Next time I see your face, you might be old and gray, won't recognize you anymore. And you'll swear at all the kids and tell them that they can lick your boobs, which sag down to the floor. Hilarious. So while we have the time, ignore the warning signs. Let's make some memories. This will be our last hurrah. We'll go our separate ways and we'll begin our dying days and grow apart. This will be our last hurrah. Maybe we could stay friends, but adults are dead. sad regretful life neglected trophy wife and every night you'll dream of me shut the fuck up and the things you wish you'd done you'd realize i was the one i was the one that got away is that kitty perry yes <laughs> this will be our last hurrah we'll go our separate ways and we'll begin Before you jet set to a thousand miles away Case, don't sweat it, you know we'll call and text and fit chat every day I know I'll just miss you Aww. And helping with your big dumb plans So this is it This is our final chance This will be Four, you and Joe and Ming Lee are prepping for another day at the bakery. Good morning, Sleepyhead. Do you need breakfast? Uh, actually, guys, I need to ask you something. They stop prepping and look up. I'm wondering if I can work here part time this summer instead of full time. Part time? Why? Well, uh, I want to get some experience running my own business before going to Harvard this summer. I mean, the festival's in August. We're going to need all hands on deck. Plus, Mid-Autumn Festival is all about family and a moon and... Please, guys, this is important to me. All right. Part-time, then. Yes, thank you. What's the business idea? Uh, it's TBD. We're gonna figure it out. 
hey, what did we do before Jane developed motor skills? We ran the store ourselves. We'll be okay. That girl has never once asked for time off. Not even when she had a staph infection in middle school. Ugh, that was a very unfortunate conversation with a health inspector. It's highly unusual. Should we go into her room and investigate? Just like the good old days? Really? No. Hey, she would have never told us about her crush on Erica had we not found her eighth grade yearbook. Stop it. We don't do that anymore. At least that way I can pretend like we're spending time together as a family. Yunjo picks up a framed photograph from a nearby table and hands it to Ming Li. Do you remember this? Oh, Vancouver. The only place in the universe with a bakery better than this one. He falls silent and looks at the picture. You okay? Yeah, it's just... You take a picture to capture the moment But that's not what a picture is for Pictures fill frames in your basement What you want is the moment to last After dinner, we stopped at an old-fashioned ice cream store, split a whole Sunday and walked down the parkway. The trees opened up and we saw a golden violet sunset over a beach about to close. Jane pulled our hands as she marched down the concrete steps, sights on the sandy shore. Elaborate sand castles made by our daughter, this tiny new person we raised. Her only desire to build the walls higher and safe from the force of the tide. But time is passing so quickly. You don't feel it? That's not the point. I mean, yes, those days are gone now and we'll never be able to really go back, but it's not like we did something wrong. Time will always pass, no matter what we do. One second per second And that's just how it is Doesn't matter who you are Or what or where or how Don't rush, don't fret Just take it all in second per second it's always been that way the night becomes the day the day becomes the night slow down take a breath just take it all in remember this moment they waltz together Of the 
clock leaves the last in its wake. It'll take me more than three months to see you off. But gosh, I can make do with two and a half. Time will pass. We can make it last. We can make it last. One second per second. And that's Don't just how so it bad. is. second per second okay. it's always been One that way the second. night becomes the day the take day becomes the time. night slow down take, take a breath just, just take, take it all in, in. remember each moment forever Scene five, Casey and Jane are counting money at the bake sale table under a banner that says, get baked goods. Casey is packing up money into her backpack. So the good news is that people really like your red bean buns. They're the best selling item. Ugh, red bean buns are the pumpkin spice lattes of Chinese pastries. The bad news is that we've only made $2,000 total. It's been three full weeks. Uh, not for lack of trying. We break into your store every evening to make all the stuff for the next day. It's incredible we haven't been caught yet. Yeah, let's keep it that way. My mom would murder me if she found out. At least then you wouldn't have to deal with all this scholarship nonsense. Because you'd be dead. Thank you for that, Casey. What if we got written about by one of those food insta blogs? Like, Food Machine! Everyone on the planet reads Food Machine! Food Machine is like the singular force behind pho. Yeah. Why is pho so big? It's just soup. You know Food Machine takes bribes, right? Really? Yeah. My fourth cousin opened up a pho shop in Michigan and paid Food Machine like $150,000 under the table for a good review. Well, anyway, we don't have $150,000. Z approaches the table with a choreographed swagger, rolling a wagon full of boxes of unopened iPhones, Slow day for business, ladies? Fuck off, Z. Ugh, whatever. Z pulls out his iPhone 12 and plays on it. Hey, is that the iPhone 12? No, this is 12 iPhones. No, that one, or is that the 11? This is the 12. Those are 11s. You have 12 iPhone 11s? You interested? You're selling phones? What? No, I'm selling drugs. These are for me. I bought them with this month's drug profit. $12,000, baby. You bought 13 iPhones all for yourself with a month's worth of drug money? Well, I don't want to brag, but I don't not want to brag. Also, you're selling drugs? Well, okay, they're not really drugs, like in the don't do drug sense. Explain. My cousin runs an experimental marijuana farm in Hong Kong where he breeds new, like, designer plants. The one that I'm selling is an indica pomegranate blend that I named myself. Pomegranate. <laughs> <laughs> that just sounds like you don't know how to pronounce pomegranate. Like, you could do any better. Indigranate. Oh, that is better. But $12,000, that's impressive. And given your natural talent, those drugs must be really valuable. Thank you. Anyway, you gonna buy something? Bike sales, huh? One industry veteran to another. What's this binder for? So many colors. This is our outreach program. We cold call 800 people every day. It's how we outperform every other bake sale in the state. <laughs> Boring. How do you keep track of clients and orders? Well, I've only got one product, and my clients call me, so... Do your clients like edibles? Everyone likes edibles. Do you sell edibles? No. Oh. 
say, we've got this table reserved for the next few months. I don't suppose, you don't think maybe. Jane. <laughs> I mean, that would be crazy. Yeah, crazy. I'm just saying, if Z needed a console. I didn't agree to help you sell drugs, and with Z? Hey. He's a bigger shit than the one in his pants. He was voted least likely in our class. Just least likely. Still here. Case, come on. It'll be fine. We don't have to like him. Seriously. We just have to work with him. Imagine, those drugs with our bake sale? We can make at least 10 times what that idiot is making. Whoa, 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 whoa. Who are you calling idiot? Case. I'll think about it. Here's what I propose. Please. You're talking to a businessman. Here's what I propose. So there I was, walking home from the Apple Store, when I came across you young ladies and your adorable little bake sale. Doe-eyed, naive, and clearly in need of some management consulting. And what are the odds that we would meet this way? Two young upstarts and the catch of the day. It's me. I guess in other words, what I'm trying to say is that you seem like you could use my help. I could offer you my expertise and earn you a win. Your enthusiasm in my business acumen. You caught me on a good day and you're lucky you did. Cause I'm about to blow your freaking minds. Let's make a deal for the largest margins. Let's work together for the synergy. Let's make a deal on a fiscal canyon. Incontrovertibility of vertical integration. Let's make a deal. I'm a businessman. You know, I'm surprised you're so cool. I always thought you were kind of pushy. Could you excuse us for like 32 bars? What? He's just gonna use us to sell more drugs and validate his male fragility. Yeah, and buy more iPhones. But look at the bigger picture. Z has the resources to lead us to the gold mine. He's crazy and brazen and highfalutin. We can use him for his money. That's kind of scummy. And we'll see profits climb in no time. We're using his drugs. Call it a drug mine then. It's showtime. Let's make a deal for the largest margins. Let's work together for the synergy. Let's make a deal. It's expedient, but convenient. Summer weekends off the deep end. Case, what do you say? Okay. Great. Let's, Let's make, make a deal. deal. Okay. Okay. Let's do it. I knew it. On one condition. What's your position? An equal partner expedition. Hmm. Let's make a deal for the largest margins. Let's work together for the synergy. Let's make a deal on our fiscal canyon. The incontrovertibility of vertical integration. Let's make a deal. I'll give 10% to each of you. That's the opposite of equal to. Make it 40. 40? 20. 20? Funny. 50. 40. 60. 40. Really? Really. 30. 30. 30. Dirty, hate it. Make it 33. Deal. Scene 6. At the store, Ming Li is working with colored paper while Jane is engrossed in her phone. Um, hey, can you help me with something? That depends on what it is. I'm watching this video on how to make DIY lanterns for the Mid-Autumn Festival. And I can't figure out where to put this tape. Can't you just buy those? It's going to be a surprise for mom. And she checks my credit card statements. Wow. Gender roles are dead. <laughs> Ming Li destroys his lantern, distraught. You're home early! I'm just stopping in. Apparently, for our event, we need to go to the police station and submit a D4C5A instead of going to the courtroom with a D4C5B 
which I'm told is completely different. And now I'm going to be late for a meeting with some sponsors and... I can turn in the form. Really? I know you're busy. Yeah, sure thing. Not a problem. You're a lifesaver. Jane grabs a rag and starts wiping the counter. That's our Harvard daughter. Did somebody say Harvard? Mrs. Feldman. What an entrance. Hi, Jane. I was just in the neighborhood and figured I'd pop in and check on my favorite family. <laughs> Have we met before? Just once. Anyway, I wanted to see how you were feeling after, you know, you know. After school ended because it's such a big part of my life? Exactly. Mrs. Feldman pats Jane on the head. Should we do something? No, no, let's just observe. Everything here is awesome. And how's your little side business going? You never could sit still. You two must be so proud. Actually, she won't tell us anything about it. It's a little weird that you know, though. Well, I spend every day hanging out with minors, so, you know, word gets around. How about now? That's definitely strike two. Well, Mrs. F, it was so great to see you, but we're super busy here prepping for a big festival, so... The Mid-Autumn Festival? I live my whole life on the lunar calendar. That's three. Is there anything else I can get you? Don't think so. Is there anything I can get you? What? I feel as counselors, we have a unique glimpse into the minds of our students. And I just wanted to let you know that I am available as a resource to you as well. I we'll think we're about. okay. Okay, Mrs. F, bye. Jane pushes Mrs. F out of the store. She was your counselor for four years? It felt like eight. I'll be in my room. Well, I'm headed to my next meeting. Ming Lee is left alone at the store. Jane's phone, which she left on the counter, buzzes. Ming Lee looks at it, then looks away. The phone buzzes again. He tries not to look. Is my phone... A chair! He hands her the phone. She leaves. Scene seven. That evening, Jane is waiting in the M&M kitchen. Casey enters with a flyer design. Check it out. Flyer design. We can't use flyers. This is a covert operation. We'll have to market stuff online. You know, the dark web. Jane takes the flyer and puts it in her bag. Oh, wow. That's legit. So, here's the plan. We're going to make cannabis-infused Chinese bakery pastries. I'm so excited. And there it goes. So this is it, huh? I was expecting something better. Do you have it? One jar of Indigrana can of butter, just like you asked. So I can leave, right? If you're gonna be a part of the team, you should probably learn how to bake. Isn't there something I do that's a little more business oriented? Casey pushes Z some ingredients and a bowl. This is our business. Let's get started. A two, three, four. How do you make and bake a batter that's best done better? It's just a matter of execution. There's no undoing once you're spooning it in. So. Whisk the dries and mix the wets to get better rise. Then let it sit a bit with the cannabis. And let us agree that it'll all go best if we follow the recipe. There's always one more step to follow. Call it all done once you're then wrap it all up with a bow to be a good cook. Go by the book. Here's my pitch for perfecting your dish. What? You want to get rich? Then follow the recipe. Hey, you've got to be more precise. 
What does it matter? They're just gonna get baked anyways. If the proportions are wrong, the pastries will be lumpy. I wasn't talking about the pastries. <laughs> Maybe I don't understand what going by the book is, but how does selling edibles qualify? We're just talking about baking. That's not like my life philosophy. Isn't it though? Life's a book and you're the author. You can be a lawyer or a doctor. Just don't be a bother. Why, it's not hard to see that we'll all be sheep if we follow the recipe. There's always one more step to follow. You'll never be done once you've begun. You're looking for the answers in books. The thing about books, they're gobbledygook. When was the last time you looked in a book? You want to follow the pack? Then follow the recipe. Again, not what I was saying. You're anti-book now? I'm anti-establishment, narc. You're just anti-being liked. Well, that makes you anti-anti. We doing this? There's always one more step to follow. Just fussing that last bit of dusting. Fold in the pork, crimp with a fork. A little more torque. Just put in the work and see the way you wanna go. We know how you know because they told us so. Now when they go. Eight. Ming Li and Yun Zhao are at the store prepping. Ming Li holds up two swatches of red. For the streamers, which do you think better says Happy Mid Autumn Festival? Slash goodbye to your daughter for half a year. Ming Li's expression is flat. He picks the darker red. You got Raz, Dad. Don't fight it. Jane, don't talk to your father that way. Oh no, now I'm getting razzed. Hey, Jane, you want to help me pick the full color scheme? We're looking at Laguna versus Treasure. And I have a feeling you'll like Laguna. No, sorry. We've got a small fire at the business I've got to put out. Casey can't handle it? No, Casey was the one burning paper and accidentally started a small fire. Don't forget your shift tonight. Yeah. Uh, okay, bye. See you never. Hey, kids leaving is a rite of passage. We're becoming middle-aged. Well, find me a sword and we'll slay a dragon. Should I get my wizard's robe? Huzzah! <laughs> Stop. Can we be serious? Sorry. It's just the way things are. Kids always leave their parents. Leave them to pursue their own dreams and don't always keep in touch. We still talking about Jane? Mom and I don't speak. You know that. You could. Maybe you should call her. It's just so complicated. When dad passed, all of these things needed to be done. Funeral services, carrying his will, things I didn't have time for because I was in business school. It might help fix things between you. I just imagine calling her and her acting like things are okay, acting like I didn't disappoint her or myself. And I won't make her do that for me. I don't want to play pretend. Okay, it's okay. I trust you. Ming Lee goes in for a silly hug. Scene nine, Casey, Jane, and Z wait for customers at the bake sale table. The banner now says, get baked good. Are we ready? 
I was born ready. You were born stupid. Just remember, if they want the edibles, they'll ask for the two for three. hi -ya! Hatoshi, can I help you? Oh, no thanks, Sensei. I already bought a button earlier this week. hi -ya! Now that's a great example of why we always target new customers. I was doing fine without some fancy ad campaign. Aw, it's okay. You don't get it, but it's okay, you'll learn. Nobody else approaches the table. Seems like your marketing campaign was a big old bust. I ran the online ads. We got like 10,000 impressions. You're telling me 10,000 people saw your ad and not a single person has come by? You guys, it's okay. Look, someone's coming now. Hello, ma'am. Are you here for the baked sale? Oh, absolutely. I love baked sales. I will have the uh, three for two. Uh, do you mean the two for three? What? Oh, two for three is probably what you want. It's the crowd favorite. Oh, I think I get what's going on here. You guys are trying to scam me. What kind of idiot would pay the price of three oh, cookies and no. only get two in return? What? That's not... You think I'm stupid? No. I'm just no, kind of piece of poop that you can step on no. like a rug. Like I'm a doormat. You're going to traipse all over me like I'm a fucking doormat. I am so, so sorry about the behavior of my subordinates. And in the presence of a lady... Ooh. You can bet we'll be having a stern chat after this. It is so nice to see a young man with some respect. I will have the three for two, please. Absolutely, miss. By the way, has anyone ever told you that you look just like Maggie Gyllenhaal? Oh, I have gotten that, especially in my 20s. Well, you don't look a day over 25. <laughs> Let me give you my card. Oh. They exchange goods and Z gives a business card from his pocket. You guys really don't understand customer service. Don't push it. Yo! <laughs> Woo! Yo! What up, busy dog? <laughs> I love you, Big Cheeto. What can I do for you? Oh, you already know what you can do for me. Big Cheeto's been coming to me for a fix for four years. He's my oldest customer. Hell yeah! Pushing on 40 next year. Uh. Give me the two for three. That's the new code word, right? Oh, uh, here's $200. Yeah, right on. Big Cheeto collects the goods and leaves. That's the best part about selling highly addicted designer drugs. Repeat customers. Wait, say that again. That's the best part about selling highly addicted designer drugs. Repeat customers. Holy shit. Right now, we're losing the race. We're broken, we're shit out of cheer. But look how after one taste, look at that face, it's so clear. Our original model was all about finding a market. But the truth of the matter is finding the market. Broken, we're shit out of luck. But look how after one taste, they're stoked to rehit for 200 bucks. What we're selling is actually not what we thought was for sale. Cause it makes them go tingly and clingy, distinctly, it's drugs. We don't gotta sell out. Maxine clients sell out. numbers 
names of everyone you've ever sold a drug to and when. Contact the people you bum to, but never expected to hear from again. They will form the foundation of indignation, our new empire. Email, SMS, iMessage, don't get the word out, keep the word in. exactly what to do. Mostly I just figure it out as I go. No, seriously. What? Five minutes ago this was never going to work and now Casey, it's... come on. We've got work to do. I know that look in her eye. Something's coming. Before I realize where she's going, she's already running. I know that look in her eye. Get ready. She's already running enters Jane's room and starts sneaking around. Yoon Jo is in the living room standing at the phone. You take your fears and hide them away. I'm afraid of what she'll say. You stole your secrets where the light won't fall. It's like I don't know you at all. There's so much I don't know. It's frightening. It's like we're moving through a forest at night, darkness uncovered. There's so much I don't see. It's exciting. It's like we're moving through a forest at night, darkness uncovered. Ming Lee finds a flyer for a bake sale in Jane's bag. Now I can see my
as the end of act one audience this would be the time if you feel so inclined to unmute and applaud you could do so great job guys amazing um in a moment we're gonna take five minutes we're gonna set a five minute timer on the screen take an intermission break take a pee break and we'll see you in a little bit okay now you should set your screen Hey Jordan, I have a question. Yeah, who is this? Oh, uh, this is my ear. This okay. is a deep books one. So I was just wondering if um, one of my friends joined a little late and she didn't get an opportunity to set her screen. Is it too late or? Uh, no, we <coughs> to do it. So, um, if you, first of all, are you in gallery mode? It's hard if you don't have. Oh, are you on a computer or are you on an iPad or something? Oh, I'm I'm on a computer. Sorry, I was muted. Oh, that's okay. So, um, is the person who can't set the screen also on a computer? Yeah, she's on a laptop. Okay, if you just click on anybody whose video is off, uh, hover over it for the three dots, and then click uh, hide non-video participants, that should make it fine. Although right now it might be weird because Deepak's sharing a screen, but uh, it should be fixed <laughs> later. Okay, I think it worked. It'll work. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. That's um, okay. Hey guys, this is the intermission, so go ahead and use the bathroom or like stand up, take a stretch break. Sedentary lifestyle is not good for you. Um, <laughs> I'm just gonna talk about Give Well, that charity that I like. Oh, let me plop the link in the chat. And I guess let me open up the chat. How do I pop the chat back in? Oh, that's not what I wanted. Okay, there we go. Um, I, I opened the chat. Oh, okay. This is the link to GiveWell. So GiveWell was started by like two former investment bankers who were like, oh, we've made enough money, so now we want to do charity work. And then they started looking into charities and they were like, whoa, none of these charities are like keeping any like adequate like metrics or information. And so they started this charity called GiveWell, although it wasn't called GiveWell at the time. Um, and the idea behind GiveWell is like traditionally, like the charity navigator way of evaluating charities was like, what percent of their donations do they take off the top? And then the idea here was that like, actually um, you don't, you're not a better charity just because you take less off the top. Like it makes more sense if you do spend more money on like administrative stuff, if it allows you to be a more effective charity. And so the idea is that they collect donations and there's like five different sectors that they collect donations for, but there's also just like a discretionary fund. And then if you're a charity, you apply to get grants from those funds by uh, showing that you have like demonstrable effect. So charities that like have metrics showing that they're really, really successful. Like there's a lot of ones where like, first of all, there's charities just like give directly where your money can go to somebody. Usually it's in like a part of the world where like there's more poverty and stuff like that. Um, just cause it's easier to make a difference. But um, that's like the easiest thing is like give directly gives you like, obviously your $100 is going to go farther for somebody um, who really needs it than for you. But then also there's like really, really big multipliers. Like you can lower like the prevalence of river blindness if you like increase the level of vitamin B2, which like doesn't cost that much and stuff like that. So there's really, really big gains to be had by the people who are working at these charities. And that's the idea behind GiveWell and all of the GiveWell charities. So if you want to just go to that link that I sent, secure.givewell.org. And if you just do like a pay what you want, like around $20 donation, That'd be super cool. And if you do happen to do that, just let us know because we're trying to keep track. Um, and yeah, I guess that's all I'll say about that. Jordan, you rock. Jordan, can you hear me? Oh, yeah. I didn't hear what oh. you said. Oh, I said you rock. Oh, yeah, thanks. I mean, you rock too, man. Oh, thanks, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, how, do, how does Mrs. Hustler get our soundtrack? Uh, you can't yet. But... <laughs> You will at some point. Stay tuned. <laughs> I forgot the tuned. word tuned. Stay <laughs> on the call. <laughs> Yet. Yeah, I mean, we have these recordings. They're pretty good, but they're not really, really good. So we want to get something really, really good out. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, thanks, Farzan. Farzan's loving it so far. Oh. Just don't worry. There's still one act. There's still a whole act <laughs> for us to mess that up. Oh yeah, there's a whole act, yeah. <laughs> but that's okay. It's built into the comment, you know. So far, so good. <laughs> oh, 25 seconds. Oh, we'll see my <laughs> this mid autumn festival sounds dope. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I want to go there. <laughs> Sounds awesome. <laughs> oh, that's my mom. Oh, it's peeping. Stop it. Zero. Did you hear that? I didn't. Mm. It's not sharing audio, I guess. Anyway, whenever Taylor's back. Did you stop sharing audio? Well, only only when I'm sharing video, but whatever, it doesn't matter. Oh, I see. <laughs> so good so far. <laughs> I'm uh, ready when y'all are. Um, Cass, can you turn on your videos again so we can make sure you're here? Look at those faces. Okay. Um, well, as soon as we're ready, I'm ready. Let's do it. Ah. Uh. Love this musical. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Act two, scene zero, an irritated, incessant knocking. Jesus Christ, let me in. PC stands opposite Z with the side door of the bakery between them. She cracks the door open. What's the code word? What the? I was just in there. Can't let you in without today's code word. Oh, my God. He <laughs> scrolls through his phone, searching for an email. He holds, holds it up to the door crack. Okay, it's idiotic moron 69. Casey opens the door. You are an idiotic moron. 69. <laughs> Shut up, stupids. Hold on. Before we start, I have this idea for the name of our bake sale. What do you guys think of? Baked. It kind of sounds like the name of a stoner movie. You don't really name a bake sale. Come on, it's marketable. All right, let's table this. They're going to start lining up any minute now. Hands in. One, two, three. Get baked! They come prepared with their password at the gate. What's the code word? And your order? Any more, sir? All right, see you next morning, sir. Looking for an escape. Come on down and get baked. Hey. Supply, demand, they'll never know we have more. Make a lap, tap the rest of the line. Sorry, sir, you didn't get here on time. Sublime. Yo, let me let you in on a little secret. People start lining up at 9.45 p.m. Really, you should get here before 9.30. And of course, you're on the email list, right? What email list? Can you get my friend here on the list? I'll tell you what, give me your email. I can put you on the list for tomorrow. Just make sure you come right at 9.30 and don't tell anyone about this. Dude, thank you so much. It's so confusing how they do it here. It's confusing because it's better. Oh yeah, totally. So cool. Yo, James, I got on the list. Then we bake <laughs> these, bake the pastry.
one. Yoon Jo is at the store frantically doing prep work for the event, sorting out pastries to be cooked, etc. I found something that you might want to see. Ming Lee holds up the flyer. Bake sale. What is this? It's Jane's. I found it in her room. Don't look at me like that. It's not me. She's going to hate forever now. Just read it. He gives her the flyer. Buns, mooncakes. Wait, is this the side business she's been doing? I don't know. But I think this is where she is. Okay, go pick her up. Lights shift to the bake sales as Jane and Z close up shop. Z looks at all the money made during the day. It's so beautiful. Can you wipe down the table? I need to leave. I'm already late for my shift. Have you ever seen anything so beautiful? Z, come on. Hey, are you going to wipe down the table? It's the most profitable day of the summer. They look at the money. It's beautiful. beautiful. <laughs> That's like two-thirds of your tuition, Jane. How does it feel? It feels like we have to leave. All right, all right, all right. Uh, Jane, six o'clock. This guy a cop? Dad? You're missing your shift. What are you doing here? If you say you're going to work a shift, we expect you at that shift. I'm sorry, I was about to head home. I was just- What, busy with your bake sales? And Mr. Huang, we're not doing any bake sales. Ming Li <laughs> pulls out the flyer. Really? Well, your flyers say otherwise. Where did you get this? It doesn't matter, we have to go. Now. Lights shift back to the store. Jane? Something you want to tell us? Yeah. I'm sorry that I didn't tell you guys about the bake sales. I shouldn't have kept something so big from you. So... So, Casey and I have... We've actually been sneaking into the store at night to bake. And you know that... I know that it's a big insurance liability. Yeah. All of that equipment in the kitchen is on lease. And I'm really, really sorry. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter how careful we're being, it's still a liability, and technically it's also insurance fraud. What is happening right now? I just wanted to learn to do everything you and Dad do, but on my own. I know you taught me how to bake, but I don't run the store. I wanted to get experience with the business side. By cannibalizing our sales? We have the exact same customer base. We have the exact same product. I can make it up to you guys. Overtime. I can do more. You're barely here. We're ending the bake sales. But all of these customers that I've made, repeat customers, they're actually a a lot younger than our usual clientele. I can bring them here for the festival. Hundreds of customers. No more lies, Jane. Please, Mom. I can do this. Hundreds? Yeah. All right, Jane. Huh. You really spun that. Please stay out of my room, Dad. Scene two, Z and Casey at the bake sales without Jane. Z is holding his phone and throwing a fit. This is high quality horse shit. Hey, at least it's something. Oh yeah, it's really something. Guess what guys, I can't help with the business I started anymore because I'm scared of disappointing my dad. Like goddamn, could you be more of a stereotype? She's just like my fucking parents, keeping her head down and working as a mindless drunk. Just fade into the anonymity of life. So that's good enough. I mean, it's just like disrespectful, you know? If you're gonna break up with someone, you could at least call. She's not breaking up with you. But isn't she, in a way? Not really. So like, what's your deal? Why are you not more, you, you're just okay with this? Yeah, I mean, what do you mean? I mean, what are you and Jane? It's like so freaking weird. We're friends. You're not just friends. 
Oh, so you're the expert on friends now? You're not just friends. You idolize her. Do you look at her like how my dog used to look at me? Before he got to know the real you? <laughs> After eighth grade, I went to summer camp downstate, like four hours away, and where I didn't know anyone. And one weekend, it was my birthday, and I kind of made tentative plans with these kids to go into town after dinner and grab milkshakes. But the afternoon of the day of, they all decided they wanted to go swimming at the docks instead. And, well, I can't really swim, so I kind of just went back to my cabin and cried. So I called Jane. And when I told her what happened, she came all the way down to camp for hours and brought me a milkshake at 10 p.m. when everyone else was getting ready to go to sleep. And it was my birthday. And it just saved me. That's why I trust Jane so much. Okay. Sometimes even more than I trust myself. Okay, your, your problem is you can't imagine a universe where Jane isn't there for you, but you're, I mean, you don't need to be saved anymore. You're smart and clever. Are you complimenting me? Jane's always there for you. Correct. What happens when she's not? What are you talking about? She's your safety, yeah, but she also stops you from walking on your own two feet. She's like a crutch. It's okay to rely on people. Huh? Oh, I just get the sense that you don't have many friends. Now who's complimenting who? I'm meeting up with Jane in an hour to talk about the new plan. You should come. Meh. It'd be cool if you came. Well, it's not like I have anything better to do. Fine. I'm in. You want to grab a quick bite together first? With you? No, I mean, uh, it's just Jane and I have dinner plans after. Friend plan. Shut up. Scene three. Jane enters the police station. Mrs. Feldman is at a desk near the front of the station. Mrs. Feldman? What are you doing at the police station? Young lady, that's Officer Feldman to you. You're a police officer now? Only on Tuesdays and Thursdays. You're a part-time police officer now. I'm full-time in my heart. Right. So, I need a D4C5A. Yes, I recall. All gatherings of just 500 folks or more require, require paperwork from City Hall. We'll invite all our old customers, share equipment, and do all the in granite fillings out back. Drug money we keep, pastry money goes to the store so they don't notice a thing. If my estimates are right, it'll put me just over $200,000. One last big sale. I don't have that many drugs. But you're a supplier. I'd have to call the guy and get it from the docks. The dogs are where good people go to die, capiche? Also, I don't have a car. You can use my parents' car. I'll just tell them Casey is borrowing it for something. This is so complicated. Why can't we just keep doing what we're doing? Well, the bake sales are no more. I told my mom they're over. The only chance we'll get right now is at my parents' store. Here's the form. That's great, then we'll station some cops at the Cops? Do away with in your mind All the hits, the obvious that you denied When two worlds collide Please tell me there won't be cops at the festival Actually, scratch everything I said Okay The day's been cancelled cause my Nana's dead Okay. okay. That's so sad, but TBH, we've got plenty on our plate. We're in the early stages of investigating. In our little town of Minnesota Valley, a town with several bowling alleys, there's a hot new drug coming out of the gate, and they call it 
Tigran. Oh, oh shit. shit, that is crazy. The cops on our tail, that's amazing. It's all I ever wanted. Okay, so no registration, no cops. But Jane, this is dangerous. Is it really worth it? It's too late to change now. This is my last chance. Shift to Mingli, who is surrounded by lanterns, working on them with cloth and glue. Yoon Jo enters. What's all this? It's Mid-Autumn Festival. Duh. Oh, wow. I haven't seen lanterns like this since I was a kid. We used to make these every year, the entire family. Lighting up the darkness, little stars in autumn sky. And Dad would point up at the moon and say, No matter how far you go, the moon will stay in tow. It follows you even when we're not around. Just take a deep breath and slow down. And in that moment, it seemed like it'd never be over. You can't control the passing time. We're standing by each other's side when two worlds collide. Oh, Jane, are those the streamers? Let me see. You excited about spending some quality time together? Sure, Dad. It's really coming up. The last big sale. Hey, just take it slow. One second per second. Do you think something's up with Jane? Let's just all try to enjoy the festival. This will be our last one. Are we ready? We were born ready. Whatever the festival may bring, I'm putting my best foot down. Instead of pulling apart, I'll pull back in and spin it my way. Scene four. Jane and the parents are at the bakery. Jane runs the register up front. The parents are in the kitchen filling orders. Z and Casey arrive and Z hands Casey the keys. Casey shouts to the parents in the kitchen. Thanks again for letting me borrow the car. Everything go okay with the shipment? You know it. Hands in. One, One two, two, three, three get, get baked. baked. They're filling up the store to get their buns filled with a little bit more. I stand up front, taking orders aside. I run them back through the kitchen divide. Two more red bean and one lotus seed. Run this back, please. And a detour behind the scenes. Casey passes an order in a special red bag out through the side door to Z, who is piping them full of indigranite custard filling. As the customer is paid Jane, she counts it out and puts some of the money in the register and some of it in her pocket. Looking for an escape? Come on down and get baked! Two indigranite custard. What it takes. Come on down and get baked. And one plane. outside. Oh, looking for an escape. Come on down and get baked. Hey, get Jane. Uh, 
Think you got what it takes? Come I said, on, Jane, it's the cops. What? The cops are here. They were just around the corner. But I told them it was canceled. Well, I saw them. Guys, situation up front. Jane pokes in to investigate and sees the cops talking to a customer. We can't tell what they're saying, but they're looking at some dollar bills with a UV light. What are they doing? Should I put these away? Stay out here. Try not to look suspicious. Sure, I'll just stow my bag of drugs. Jane, Hope, I can't tell what they're saying. Come on down and get paid. God damn it. The cops leave the store. This is not good. Uh... Okay, it's not that bad. Mrs. F said that they were still in early stages of the investigation, and there's nothing that can connect the drugs to our store. They must be here for something else. Let's go find out what was happening. Jane and Casey go to find the customer to figure out what the cops wanted from him. Meanwhile, out back, one of the officers notices Z, who has just finished packing drugs into his backpack. Hey, hey kid. Z puts on his backpack and tries to act normal. What are you doing back here? Nothing. Just packing. Packaging for the store. I work here. You don't look like you're packaging anything. I locked myself out. Totally normal. What's in the bag? Z is holding a bag of unfilled pastries, which Casey ran out to him. Oh, nothing. Just smudge. Are you stealing from a store? No. Let's just run this by the owners. They grab him and take him around the front. All right, that was a waste of time. Dude's high as a kite. The cops enter the store with Z. Jane's customers begin to trickle out uneasily. Officers, there's really no need. This is all just a big misunderstanding. Ask Jane, she'll vouch for me. Uh, vouch for who? Are you the owner, ma'am? Yes. We found this kid out back with a bag of your pastries and no receipt. He worked for you? Like I said, a big misunderstanding, but I can explain. Obviously, we've never met in person, but I, I'm friends with Jane. Jane, isn't this the kid from the other day? Who? Him? I've never met him before. All right, then. No, wait, you know, I wasn't stealing. Jane, are you serious? Would you just, just for once not be such a bitch? Excuse me? Whoa. Listen, creep, just because you've seen me around school doesn't mean you can come in here and talk to me like that. Think about what you're saying. Think about what you're saying. It makes no sense. Okay, okay, that's enough. Clearly this kid doesn't work here, so we'll take him down to the station. Are you a sociopath? Jesus, don't touch me. I'm not stealing from the store. We know each other. She, we're friends. We're also, ma'am, also, ma'am, we don't have any record of you registering this event with the city. What? I had Jane register. Jane, did you not register us? We're gonna need you to shut this down and there will be a fine. For what? Overcrowding, fire rules, noise ordinances, and those lanterns on the power lines. So it'll be a couple thousand dollars. That's crazy. Ming Lee follows them out. Jane motions for Casey to leave. Casey exits. Are you kidding me? I was going to register the event, but I just got super swamped with other stuff and I'm sorry. I asked you to do one thing. How could you just forget? Don't speak when there's nothing worth saying. Don't speak. Don't. I just can't believe this, believe you anymore. I'm pushing the boundaries of my trust. What's going on, Jane? Say anything to me. What are you keeping from us? Don't you know how much this bakery? Tell me the truth, just tell me the truth. I know that I messed up. I know you need me here. Just doing a lot, all at once. Don't tell another lie to me. You know I know. You haven't been the Jane I know all summer. And you have 
nothing to say. I thought you understood how important this is for me, how important this is for us, and how important it is for them. And are you even listening? Jane, are you even listening? Jane, are you? Are you? Are you okay? I'm sorry. Don't speak when there's nothing worth saying. Don't speak. Don't. Where's mom? What's going on? That kid? That kid was from your bake sale. Jane, I know you're upset with me, but you, you can talk to me. I'm here. I'm your dad. And you can tell me anything. Dad, I love you, but don't act like we talk about everything. We don't, and I don't want to play pretend. As the time comes for your flight from the nest Where the wind won't carry you home I wish my whole heart that I knew you the best Maybe I just know you the most Five, Jane and Casey in Jane's bedroom. I'm totally screwed. You're not screwed. 
I'm screwed. There's no way I'll have tuition by next week. No supply, no indignation. My parents. God, I couldn't even look at them. And then with Z? Don't even get me started on Z. I can't believe he would put me in that situation. At least we know he's not going to blab to the cops. Yeah. Wait, put you in what situation? Why did he lie and say he worked at the store? That literally makes no sense. He probably just panicked. Like, there were cops there. He would have been fine if he had just said he was passing through or something. He didn't have to tie himself to the store like that. Well, we're his friends. Well, friends? You said it yourself. He was sort of just using us to sell more drugs. Yeah, maybe at first, but... I mean, what did he expect me to do? And my dad walked in right then. The whole operation was going to be compromised. He spent the night in jail. What? A misdemeanor for petty larceny. How do you know this? I uh, bailed him out. What about his family? Or I don't know. He called me. Wow. Um, I didn't know. He's got to go to court now, and it's a whole thing, and they could charge him, like, tons of money if it doesn't go his way. Well, he's got plenty of money. But that's not really the point. Okay, why are you getting upset? Seriously? At least take some responsibility for what happened to Z. I mean, you sound so selfish. There is nothing I could have said that wouldn't have gotten all three of us in trouble. Well, maybe all three of us should have gotten in trouble. And how does that help Z? Maybe it doesn't, but, but, but you shouldn't have spoken for everyone. You shouldn't have spoken for me. I... I want you to take my share. What? Take my share. I don't want it anymore. I, I'm not gonna do that. It's exactly the amount you need. You need it for school and I can't do that to you. You're not doing this to me. I am doing this to me. Jane, let me do this. Are you sure? Thank you. I'll drop off all the money tomorrow morning. Jane, you did it. We did it. Where did I just get off? All of a sudden, I finally see The countless times that you've spoken for me Times I should have said something for a second I almost saw my way My chance to run through the rain To be all the things I'm not sure that I am When I am me without you, Jane the dark wanted you to guide me when I was lost I always thought your north was true I was afraid we'd grow apart but now it's me outgrowing you and I 
this will be our last hurrah. We'll go our separate ways and we'll begin our dying days and grow apart. This will be our last hurrah. Someday we could be friends, but adulthood tends to make ends fall away. Scene six. Jane stands alone in her living room, holding Casey's backpack at her side. She stares at it, relaxes, and breathes a sigh of relief. She looks up and with an involuntary smile. I'm going to Harvard. A knock at the door. It's Mrs. Feldman. Jane opens the door, backpack still in hand. Good morning, miss. Mrs. Feldman? Ah, ah, ah. It's Tuesday. Officer Feldman. Thank you. Is there something I can help you with? Yes, I was hoping I could talk to your parents. My parents? Why? I mean, they're not home right now. Can I help you with something? Your car was caught on a police camera last week around the docks. They couldn't make out the driver, but they caught the plate. We just wanted to ask some questions as part of an investigation we're conducting. An investigation? Of course. Uh, but why? What's so suspicious about the docs? Oh, Dane, you're so naive. The truth <laughs> is a lot of bad people sell bad things in that area, including a certain indigranate. No. Yes. So, we're just following up, cross-checking with some other investigatory staff. It's all so exciting. Super exciting. Uh, just let me turn off the stove real quick. I'll be right back. Jane closes the door on Mrs. Feldman. She rushes to grab her phone and frantically dials a number, a voicemail. Hi, this is Casey. Leave a message. She dials again. Hi, this is Kate. Shit. She dials one more time. This time, someone picks up. What do you want? The cops are here. Mrs. Feldman knocks at the door. I thought you were calling to apologize. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I heard you spent the night in jail. Yeah. They didn't even know what the indigranate custard was, since you were wondering. And it went bad. Really smelly. So, the cops? They caught the car on camera last week when you went to pick up the indigranate. Sucks for you. Not my car, not my problem. If Casey and I get caught, that's a problem for all of us. All of us? What? You're gonna confess? Doubtful. You should just give up. Z, you don't understand. I did it. I have the money to go to school. Always about the money. Everything okay? I don't know what to do. Well, then make some shit up. That's what you're best at. Tell them Oprah had the car. Tell them the car was stolen and then magically returned. Oh, I know. Tell them Casey had the car. Man, no, that's, that's perfect. That's what you told your parents, right? That Casey had the car? Oh, man, the perfect alibi. Well, why don't I just tell them you had the car, asshole? Great, and then they can hear my side of the story when they take me in for questioning. Do whatever you want, I've gotta go. I'm in a movie theater. More knocks on the door. Jane runs back to the door and opens it. I am so sorry about that. Look, I just need to know what your parents were doing at the docks. They were here, actually, prepping for our festival. Oh, that ended up happening? I thought you said it was canceled. Yeah, it's complicated. So, if your whole family was here, who had your car? Maybe it was stolen? It's in your driveway. And then returned? Jane. Yeah. We loaned it to Casey. Thank you. Finally. I'll have her come down to answer some questions. Oh. <laughs> And another thing, just between you and me, 
the precinct thinks that they're zeroing in on the perp. What? Do you know what this is, Jane? She pulls out a UV flashlight. This is an OOV flashlight. We use it to trace counterfeit bills usually, but, well, through some clever police work at local businesses, we're using it to track which bills were transferred in the Indi granite trade. So, if any of that money gets spent, we'll know immediately. It's the last piece of the puzzle. So no one can spend the money? They think it accounts for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Can you imagine that? Jane closes the door. Her phone buzzes. It's a message from Casey. Hey, Jane. I've been doing some thinking. Can we talk? Scene 7. Yoon Jo and Ming Lee in Mrs. Feldman's office. It's so good to see you too. I can't believe the summer's already gone. Neither can we. When does Jane leave? In a couple of weeks. But that's why we're here. Jane is... Uh... Not speaking to us. She hasn't spoken to us in a week. And she's about to leave and I don't want her to leave like this. Well, did something happen? Maybe I asked too much of her. Kids will always grow apart from their parents. Or maybe I didn't ask enough. You know, my parents asked so much of me. When we had Jane, I swore to myself that I wouldn't put that same burden on her. But when I look at her, I see myself. At 17, doing everything I can to help my dad and his restaurant succeed, learning everything, being responsible for everything, running everything, because I wanted to be everything for them. I thought I never asked that of her. She does it for you. Well, she does it for me, and I do it for her. So if we're both bearing the burden, aren't we just creating twice as much weight? We never asked anything of Jane. Not out loud. And I think maybe that's the problem. Maybe it doesn't matter how much we expect from her or how much we do for her. Maybe we just need to talk it out and be honest. Wow. You two are basically counseling yourselves. <laughs> Thanks so much, Mrs. F. <laughs> you know, this is why I got into high school counseling. For the parents. That's still very weird. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. Counselors can be kind of goofy, but it's only because we care. And hey, you guys don't need to worry. You're the family that bounces back. <laughs> Just like when you found out Jane didn't get that Harvard scholarship. Anyway, I've got a thing now. Bye. She closes the door on them. Scene eight. Jane and Casey at the bake sale. Thanks for meeting me. Of course, Case. There's something I need to tell you. Actually, I've got something also. Oh, do you want to go first? Yeah. Wait, Jane, I can't do this. I wanted to tell you that I can't do this. Can't do what? This whole summer, I've kind of been thinking about this. What will college be like? What will life be like without my best friend? Casey. And I know that you know that I'm scared. That I've always been kind of scared to go off alone and without a plan. And that's part of why we make such a great team. The truth is, I've also always wanted to test myself, to see when my life is in my own hands, who I'm able to become, if I can be as strong as you. I'm really excited for you, Casey. I wanna make the most of the rest of the summer. 
and I'm so sorry you got dragged into this ridiculous mess. And so thankful that I have you. I signed up for August pre-orientation. I'm leaving tomorrow. I think the only way I can really move on is if I do it alone. Casey. Don't try to talk me out of it. And I know you'll be able to. The thing is, I don't know if this is what's right, but for the first time, I'm willing to give it a shot. No more crutches. Don't take that from me. I would never. Okay. Calls or texts? Please don't, at least for now. Casey comes in and hugs her. You had something too? Z's not speaking to me. So just tell that asshole not to spend any of the Indogranite money. Just to lay low, you know? Okay then. Goodbye, Jane. I truly hope Harvard gives you what you need. Casey leaves Jane. She comes home to officers at her front door. Is he young? That's me. Can I help you? Miss Young, you're under suspicion for your involvement with the Indigonite case. Can you please let me in? Stay where you are. We have a warrant to search the premises. What the hell? Search the premises for what? How about $200,000 worth of drug money? Sound familiar? I... what? Look, we got a tip that you were in possession of the Huang family's vehicle last Saturday at noon. We know it was you, and that kind of money doesn't just vanish. I don't know what you're talking about, and I don't have that money. Jane sinks to the ground and weeps. Take a deep breath and slow down when you're all alone. Take a deep breath and slow down. Yunjo and Mingli are making phone calls. Uh, did you try the Dean of Admissions? It's just a recording. Any word from Jane? It's not picking up. I can try Casey. Jane! Jane runs to Mingli and hugs him, crying. Oh, Jane. The parents look at each other. Yunjo joins the hug. For a moment, everything is quiet. I didn't get it. We know. We had a meeting with Mrs. Feldman. Hey, why didn't you tell us? We didn't want to let you down. I couldn't. You haven't let us down. We all make mistakes. 
Sometimes we don't get the things we work hard for. That's fine. We just try to do better next time. I know. I know what I'm supposed to do, do better next time. Making mistakes is supposed to make you better in the long run. But sometimes when I make a mistake, I just feel like shit. I feel so stupid. And I keep trying to fix things, but I just keep messing up. And then I feel worthless. And I'm not supposed to, and that makes me feel worse. And I know that if I could just move on and learn from it, that it would make me a And it would make me a good daughter. I would do anything to be that for you guys. To make you proud. We are proud of you. She hugs her daughter. It was four in the morning in March. The heater had been broken a month ago. And the freezing cold outside had us bundled in three. We slept through the last day of winter. The air still crisp with ice. When the phone call came that night, I let the phone ring twice. I told myself that spring would come and melt away the snow. My world would open up and start to bloom. We'll push on through the winter and gain a newfound strength. Strength we'll need when winter comes again. her daughter to carry a burden for her happiness. And yet... I'll call her. I told myself that spring would come and melt away the snow. My world would open up and start to bloom. But winter's gone and nothing's changed. The flowers met the sun. I guess I'll just get used to the cold.
Epilogue. At the store six months later, the new sign says baked and the place is crowded. Yoon Jo preps three bowls of naked sesame balls. Jane sets down a tray on the stove range and recoils. Frick! Jane! Jane! I'm chill. I can't believe you have to go back to school today. We've really appreciated you spending your winter vacation to help us out here at the store. God, Chinese bakeries are so freaking hip. Yeah, I found out about this place from Food Machine. It was on his top 10 hidden gems list. Ooh, oh my god, yeah. Did you see the news about Food Machine? No! Yeah, the cops arrested him for like spending a bunch of money that traced back to the indigenate trade. Hey, are you guys on the email list? You can skip the line if you ordered the night before. The night before? That's kind of confusing. It's confusing because it's better. Oh, yeah, totally. So cool. Oh my god, I just had the best idea. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? <laughs> Casey and Z are outside the store. Looks like they rebranded. A catchy name. You want to go in? No, I'm okay. We're not really friends anymore. Z and Casey exit. Jane puts on her backpack. Hey, we wanted to talk to you about something. Your father and I... Well, the store has been doing really well lately. And if you wanted to apply to transfer to Harvard next year, I think we'd be able to figure it out. We know that it's a big choice and that you probably need some time to think about it, but we just wanted you to know that we are so proud of you. You were here for you. <laughs> Dad, Mom, I'm okay. 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 Okay, losers. Who's driving? End of play. Okay, audience, this would be your chance to applaud. Actors, if you can turn your videos on, take your applause from the audience. Yeah. 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 Yeah.